Hey guys, welcome to Science Appliance where we apply the science. Finally, I am back with another FNAF theory for you guys. Now, one thing I want to point out before we begin this episode, I am really sorry about the Five Nights at Freddy's timeline, uh, the ultimate FNAF timeline. Um, what happened to that is I had to delay it quite a bit. And the reason is because I finished it. I finished editing it and there was something I, I like I couldn't upload it I couldn't find myself to upload it you know because I felt that there was something wrong with the timeline and it was just messing my whole thing up and everybody was gonna be like ah oh, you messed this part up so I want to do it but I want to do it properly so it's gonna at least take maybe another at least a month for it to come out so I'm, I'm really sorry about that massive delay who knows there might be another FNAF game before my timeline comes out but hopefully it will come out and it will wow everyone, it will get loads of views, I don't know. <laughs> but that is not what we're talking about in today's episode because today I want to come back with a bang. Today I want to come back with something that might blow your mind. And by the way, I will be trying to do a FNAF upload every week now because I think everybody's sick of everything else up being uploaded and not FNAF. So in today's episode, we're going to start off with this. Yes, the box from FNAF 4. Um, the box has been kind of there and hasn't had any any kind of flesh into the story at all. It's just there in, in the shadows. And we're wondering what's in the box. And the box is opened in FNAF World and that's all we've seen about it. We've, I mean, we've seen and heard of metaphorical boxes for example we know that there's gravestones and stuff uh, we know there's a box in the fruity maze minigame maybe that's where the dog was buried or something uh, and we hear about uh, cats or something being put into boxes or it might be children actually we've we heard of them five going into one from canny cadet stories about something going into a box so we hear a lot about boxes but is it the box I don't think so. I think there's something else inside the box that we were all not thinking of, you know? We haven't thought about this too much yet. But I think what MatPat said in his what was really in the box video is kind of right. He's changed the story quite a bit. But at the time, I think he had a good plan of what was in the box. And I still think he's kind of going with that idea. I don't think he's kind of left it left it away. So today we're going to be talking about that. So, what do I think is in the box? I think it is the one and only FNAF World. Yes, I hate to go back to FNAF World. Genuinely because it's very controversial. So, anybody could say that anything is to do with the law and no matter how much you think about it, you know, you you can you can introduce it into the timeline in any way possible. You can think of anything and it could be a possibility, right? But I really do think that the intention here was that FNAF World was in the box. And I know that MatPat said about this in his box theory, but I don't think he talked about it in the right way. So right now we've we, we, we've all heard of the metaphorical FNAF world, you know, it's not really real, it's just metaphorical, and it's metaphorically in the box. But, I don't think it's metaphorical, I think it is physical. Now, I hope that you guys are going to believe this, otherwise there's no point on me telling you this theory. But keep listening, because I've got some evidence. Now. Let's talk about what FNAF World really is. A lot of you say it isn't to do with the law, it isn't canon at all, it's just there because why not? But just remember we do have lo lots of law bits in it and with the introduction of Ultimate Custom Night, we have the introduction of Old Man Consequences into the story. We have people like Dee Dee, who came originally from FNAF World. We have all of these characters from FNAF World in Ultimate Custom Night. So it must be connected at least a little bit. So 
let's start off with that. Is FNAF World canon? What do I think about FNAF World then? Well, personally, I think that it was an arcade game. I know. You guys, you guys are all like, looking at each other like, what is he on about? But seriously, think about it. So, let's think about an arcade game. Of course, we have examples of arcade games in FNAF 6. We have Midnight Motorist, we have the Fruity Maze minigame, we have other kind of fairground rides, you know, I don't understand how it would fit in a building like that. But we have things, you know, we have all these arcade games and we know that there's arcade games, um, you can see them in FNAF 3, I don't know if you can see them anywhere else. I can't think right now. But um, there are arcade games in the pizzerias. And what I'm thinking is FNAF World is a way for one of the creators, one of the founders, I don't know if it would be Henry or William or whatever, but it would be a way for them to present the pizzerias in a really nice way, you know? Children would go up to this arcade and they'd be like, Oh yeah, I see Freddy! Oh my gosh, Toy Chica! Woohoo! It would be all exciting for the children and FNAF World is a way to present Five Nights at Freddy's in a good way. However, my theory is that when, you know, all the bad stuff happened with the missing children incident and all of that, um, it, the arcade game would be put in the box so that it represents that there, are, there is no happiness to this series anymore, you know? It's, it's sort of metaphorical. Um, FNAF World is the happy FNAF, but when all the bad things go wrong, it's put away and all the happiness goes away, you know what I mean? So, I think it's kind of symbolic of that. So, evidence for it being an arcade game. First of all, in the first version of the game, the whole thing is in Atari graphics, right? Like, you don't have this 3D-ness. You, you have this kind of 1980s, 1990s style kind of arcade game, you know? We have just a small screen in the center with Atari graphics, tiny little pixels. Uh, the resolution isn't that great. And you can't really make out detail in the characters. So, that kind of alone makes me think that it, I, I mean it was set kind of at the time of Atari graphics and so that kind of says to me that it has something to do with FNAF in general you know what I mean um, with that though if you look down below uh, if I remember correctly there's four buttons there's save there's bytes there's chips and there's something else. <laughs> I forgot the other one. But we know that bytes have a lot to do with computers. So we have like megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, um, if you are, if you have a lot of money. Um, and we have chips. Chip, but meaning the chips, you know, we have like chips in baby. Um, when you t take the chip out, then she becomes deactivated or whatever that story, however that story goes. So we have a lot of stuff relating to that. Um, we even have things like lol bits. That w that's when it was first introduced. Um, lol bits, obviously a bit is one, it, one bit is... Uh, <laughs> you guys know this stuff, okay? You guys are more computery than me. But we have a lot of references to computer stuff, um, and the fact that we have like character selection. I like. I really feel like it's kind of like a fruity maze mini game situation here. You know, in fruity maze when we had Susie playing the game, and you could see the reflection when you could see the reflection of her on the screen because we were looking out of her eyes. Um, I feel like it's kind of the same situation here. We are playing as a player of the arcade game so we're playing as a child or something who's just you know playing an RPG in in a pizzeria that's it and I think like Fruity Maze there are corruptions in it there's like a dark world there's the other side and 
it's 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 kind of hard to figure out because of course the darker side is representative of setting up the FNAF 3 minigames so that the children can have the happiest day and so that the souls can be freed but it doesn't really make sense that that's one thing that I'm struggling with but I really it everything kind of says to me that it's an arcade game I really don't know what it is and of course the final battle for Scott Cawthon uh, the final battle is Scott Cawthon and so we're playing against um, kind of the creator or something and the final piece of evidence I have and I completely forgot about this to be honest if you get the character Scott Cawthon in update 2 you get the move fourth wall and of course Scott Cawthon's the creator so he can break the fourth wall whenever he wants but we know that a fourth wall when a fourth wall is broken that's in a video game right so you can't break the fourth wall unless it's coded in so that makes me think that all of this has code and yes finally of course we have um, if you're going down to old man consequences you have to go into the glitch section and of course glitches happen in games uh, when you go down you go down a level, you go down a level, you go down a final level and it says that you have gone too deep into the code you know, that you weren't supposed to go down here so everything points to it being some computery video game um, in an arcade in the pizzeria and what I think is it was physically put in this box to symbolize the fact that all the good stuff is being put away and that is my kind of interpretation of FNAF World. Of course, you can think whatever you want. Like I said, this is my interpretation of FNAF World. It's probably not going to be yours at all. Um, and of course, FNAF World is a controversial game in the series because we don't know if it's canon or not. But I really do have a strong feeling that this was kind of the intention. Not entirely, but there are a lot of pieces of evidence to put it all together so thank you guys so much for watching this video and hopefully i'll see you in the next one or the ultimate fnaf timeline who knows goodbye